Hello, this is the trade site Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, October 25th, 2015 and ending Friday the 30th. This will wrap up the month of October. Closed out the week with a 200 pip winner on the uh, euro dollar, which was nice. Here's a look at the dollar index daily chart. Charts as usual brought to you by East Signal. As you can see, uh, two big up days for the dollar as we uh, closed out the week and actually some movement finally, so that was a positive. Of course, the euro looks like the inverse of that heading down, and that's where we made a couple hundred pips from about the 1300 to the 1100 area. Here's a look at the, uh, I'm sorry, 300 pips to the uh, 1000 area. Sorry, my bad. Uh, here's the uh, pound dollar. Didn't do as much as the euro this week. Here's a look at the Aussie. Did very little at all. We'll take a look at that in the uh, intraday action, but the whole week was basically contained about 120 pips there while I was looking at it. Here's the pound yen also drifted up and the euro yen uh, drifted down so uh, you know the euro dollar was the big mover along with the dollar index of course uh, here's a look at the intra day action 30 minute candles for the week Monday Tuesday and Wednesday were very flat um, only a hundred pips of range on the euro dollar for the whole thing until Thursday things finally started moving and uh, we got the drop that we took advantage of uh, for the rest of the week like I said it was from about the 1300 level all the way down to about the 1000 levels 300 pips uh, winner to wrap up the session and then here's the uh, pound dollar by the way back to the euro real quick here uh, total high to low of the week ended up being about 380 pips here on the pound it, however it was only about 180 so not quite as interesting all right so what do we have for the week ahead uh, let's first line this back up and then let's take a look at the economic data that's coming out this week uh, I've got a bank holiday here in New Zealand we have the uh, time change in Europe this weekend right now on Saturday uh, so U.S. does not change till next week, but Europe changes this week. That causes a weird shift typically uh, in the uh, in the pairs because people in Europe are trading an hour off of when their counterparts in the U.S. were, and then it'll get back together next week. So that causes some technical issues usually uh, Monday, Tuesday to start the week. Uh, New Zealand on bank holiday to start the week. We've got uh, on Monday Europe, uh, German IFO business climate. UK mortgage approvals, you got uh, new home sales here in the US and then jump to Monday night trade balance out of New Zealand, SPPI out of Japan, UBS consumption indicator out of Switzerland, private loans and money supply out of Europe, preliminary GDP out of the UK along with their index of services, that's at 5.30 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday. US has durable goods that morning, S&P composite 20, uh, that's the housing price index, flash services PMI out of the US, Consumer confidence at 10 a.m. out of the U.S. and then the Richmond Manufacturing Index number. Um, and then if we scroll down here, we go on to uh, Canada's Richmond. Uh, I'm sorry, Canada's uh, speak a speech out of the governor, member of the council. Uh, retail sales out of Japan, CPI out of Australia, German import prices is the first thing Wednesday early, and the German consumer climate. Their 10-year bond auction. U.S. has the trade balance number. That's one of our big three each month, so we'll be half size ahead of that. Crude oil inventories. Oh, and look, a two-day Fed meeting. So we'll be half size Tuesday night for two reasons. We've got the trade balance number, and we have a Fed announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. Rate announcement later on that day out of New Zealand to start their session. Japan, preliminary industrial production overnight. Uh, Australia, HIA, new home sales. Import prices out of Australia. UK's nationwide housing price index, German preliminary CPI, Spanish flash CPI, uh, German unemployment change, Italian 10-year bond auction. Uh, we've got net lending to individuals out of the UK, mortgage approvals out of the UK, CB realized sales out of the UK. Then in Canada, RMPI and IPPI, along with the first look at US gross domestic products. So we'll be half size Wednesday night going into Thursday for the first, that's a quarterly look. It's the first look for the Q3 GDP number here in the U.S., along with the weekly unemployment claims data. I've got a Fed member speaking. Pending home sales here in the U.S., Natty Gas, that's the weekly number. Uh, New Zealand building consents, Japan household spending, Tokyo CPI, national CPI, that's all out of Japan, along with their unemployment rate, all at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Business confidence out of New Zealand and the U.K. Australia's got their PPI and the private sector credit. We've got the uh, uh, written rate announcement out of Japan that night going into Friday. And then Japan has housing starts, uh, their press conference from their rate announcement. German retail sales, French consumer spending. Uh, we've got uh, Spanish flash GDP, Italian monthly unemployment rate. 
CPI flash estimate out of Europe, that's their CPI data, along with their unemployment rate all at once at 6 a.m. Eastern time on Friday, GDP out of Canada that day, employment cost index here in the U.S., along with core PCE price index, personal spending and income, Chicago PMI, University of Michigan sentiment, that's the final for uh, October, and then the manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMI data out of China uh, on Saturday, and keep in mind, again, next Saturday, that, that night, um, October 31st, which is Halloween, we do have the time change here uh, in the U.S. We switched to uh, an hour back daylight savings time uh, also in Canada that night. All right, so that's what we have to look forward to for this week. Again, the big numbers are going to be on Wednesday when we've got uh, the rate announcement and, uh, and trade balance. And then on Thursday when we have that first look at GDP, those should cause some action. Obviously, the market's got some energy in it finally as well, so we'll look forward to the continuation of whatever's been going on here on uh, this last week. Charts brought to you by eSignal. If you've not taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We'll help you make some money for a couple weeks while you're in trial. We do have a six-month futures mentorship program available and Forex as well for those who are interested. And uh, give us contact if you'd like more information about that. Have a great trading.